Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone. And the book of the week is... Oh, sh... Wisdom Wednesday, everyone, and <coughs> oh. no, I'm okay. That, that's that's. <clears throat> so, book of the week this week is "The Singularity Is Near: When Humans Transcend Biology" by Ray Kurzweil. Now, I'm sure you remember Ray Kurzweil as I did his book, uh, Book of the Week, a few weeks ago on how to create a mind. That was uh, Mindlum's two-year anniversary. Actually, a fantastic one. As always, it's How to Create a Mind, The Secret of Human Thought Revealed by Ray Kurzweil. So, I picked this as Book of the Week because it relates very much to a trending topic right now, which is coronavirus. And I'm sure you're wondering, what does the singularity in technology have to do with coronavirus? Well, let me tell you. I'm sure many of you have done so already. I know that I have, and at least I was forced to, work from home today. So we were having to use a variety of technologies, such as uh, video conferencing, email, text, things that we can function as a society when isolated. And if you think about it, the coronavirus was actually a catalyst to start moving us closer to singularity. The point where machines and humans start to merge, and then you can't really tell the difference. And in a way, many of us are already at that point, because if you look at your phone right now, that phone has actually become an extension of you. We're walking cyborgs. You don't leave anywhere without the phone. And if you ask most people, if they left their car running and unlocked and their phone inside, people are more worried about their phone being stolen in the car. What's the book about? Well, Kurzweil uses his idea of accelerating returns, in which there's an exponential increase in things like robotics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, genetics, computers, and what he theorized is that once machine intelligence reaches a certain point, it'll be infinitely more powerful than all of humanity and all human beings combined. But there's also a catch to this, because there will be a point where machine and humans will combine. And that's where the real singularity happens, where you can't tell what's created by artificial intelligence and what's actual real. It's all one thing. So think about what the coronavirus is essentially doing. It, it forced human beings throughout the world to isolate themselves and start understanding and figuring out how can we rely on technology to function on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can say that between things like Amazon, Zoom video chat, email, the internet, right? All these things that require machines, you could stay at home and survive and be perfectly fine. Now, of course, for somebody like me, that would drive me nuts because I actually do need human contact. Most of us do, if not everyone, believe it or not. But that's the big thing about this, and that's what, what came to mind when I saw the coronavirus. So this is a fantastic book. It's obviously very heavy. As you can see, there are uh, quite a lot of pages of references because it is a highly referenced book because it talks about um, a variety of, of topics in science. But let's start here, which is what does the evolution of biology and technology really look like? Now, one of the chapters, he talks about the six epochs. And what he mentions is that evolution is a process of creating patterns of increasing order. What does that mean? Well, let me show you. What Kurzweil believes is that it's the evolution of uh, patterns that constitutes the ultimate story of our world. Evolution works through indirection. So each stage or epoch uses the information processing methods of the pre previous epoch to accelerate and create the next. And he conceptualized the history of evolution, both biological and technological, as occurring in six epochs. And he discusses this as he goes through what 
becomes a singularity. And if you pay attention, the interesting thing about this is that what often looks like an exponential curve at a distance just looks like a very smooth curve, but as you get closer, you can see there are little notches and points of acceleration. And you can think of this very much in terms of the technological age when it comes to a computer. Think about this phone that I have in my hand. I'm only 33 years old, and I can remember no more than about 20 years ago what it was like when I first had a computer, right? And growing up with a computer in the 90s. Now, because of Moore's laws where things are doubling over every year, every 11 to 12 months, this little phone that I have in my hand is about maybe a thousand, maybe even a million times more powerful than the computer that I had about 20 or 25 years ago. And even more so, in a way, based on its computing power, it's actually a lot cheaper too. So think about what that means. What is that gonna look like 10, 20, 30 years from now? Now, one thing that Ray Kurzweil predicts is that by 2029, or 2030, we will be we have, we will have reached a point where we completely reverse engineered every single pattern of thought and function within the brain. And at that point, based on Moore's law, with the doubling of technology and capabilities, it's only a matter of time that artificial intelligence and machines will reach a point where they're infinitely better than all of humanity combined. And again, that's when the singularity is met. And of course, as part of that, there's going to be a merging between human and machine. Now, there's one thing I do want to reference, which is a famous quote by one of my favorite authors on technology, Marshall McLuhan. In this timeless classic called Understanding Media, the Extensions of Man, which was written about 50 years ago, Marshall McLuhan said this, we, being human beings, we make the tools, and then the tools make us. So think about that. As we develop these technologies, right, that advance civilization and extend ourselves, whether it's our eyes, you know, for uh, cameras, our brain, which becomes the internet, right, our feet, which becomes wheels, with the automobile, right, as we extend ourselves, how do those tools start to make us? Think about the tools that we use right now, this video that I'm doing to communicate through you, to you through the internet. How do these tools change and mold society and civilization? How do they change us? Because, in fact, if you haven't noticed, the singularity is definitely near. And if not, it's already here. Think about the concepts in this book and as it applies to technology and this current coronavirus outbreak. So, the one thing I will tell you, though, is that when it comes to human beings, if you're going to bet on human beings beating something, always bet on human beings. Because, if anything, we're really good at killing shit that's alive. So, with that said... Happy Wisdom Wednesday. Stay safe, wash your hands, get a lot of sleep, exercise, get outside, get some vitamin D, you know. And as always, Happy Wisdom Wednesday, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.